In this video, we'll create an executable schema that we'll invoke from a serverless function that we use with Vercel. We'll use the GraphQL tools schema package and we'll use the graphql.js package as well as Vercel to run our serverless function locally. Let's begin by installing the dependencies GraphQL and the GraphQL tools schema package. With these installed, let's create the file GraphQL inside of the folder API inside the root of our project directory. Then let's go ahead and import the packages that we've just installed. We'll import make executable schema from the GraphQL tools library, and then we'll import GraphQL from the GraphQL package. Then let's create some simple type definitions for our GraphQL API. We'll create the type query, and the first query and only query that we'll create will be users. We'll define the type user, and we'll define that it has a username and a avatar of the type string. Then let's begin by creating some simple resolvers for our GraphQL type definitions. So for the user query, we'll return an array of users, and inside of here, we'll return the username for our users. And if this was a real world project, you would be fetching this from some kind of database. Then with our users, let's override the root type for user, and we'll return avatar, and we'll return the value of a avatar URL. And fetching from the root user, we can fetch the username, and we can inject this inside of a new template literal, and we can invoke root.username. Then, then all that's left to do is go ahead and create schema, and this will invoke the make executable schema passing in the type defs and resolvers. We'll then export a default asynchronous function. Using the arguments request and response from the Vercel handler, what we can do inside of here is invoke the GraphQL function that we imported previously. We need to pass it this schema and the query. But first, let's get the body from the request. And then from that body, we can get the query, any variables, and the operation name. So using GraphQL that we imported, we'll assign this to result, and we'll await GraphQL passing the schema query no context, the variables and the operation name. We'll then finish by returning, we'll then return by returning the status 200 with the JSON response. And using the Versal dev CLI, we can run VC dev and have that GraphQL endpoint successfully running on localhost 3000. I'm using Insomnia, but you can use curl or Postman or anything else such as the GraphQL Playground or Graphical to make a request. Let's make a request to localhost 3000 slash API slash GraphQL and make a request to get all of our users usernames. Then if we add avatar to the query, you can see here that that, that root user type is returning the avatar with the username included. If we switch this to be a delete request, you'll see that this is successful. And this is because we don't check to see what that method request is. So from the request, we can destructure method. If that is not a get or post request, we can return an error. And then we can include the header allow, and we can pass in the allowed request types to be get and post. Now back inside of Insomnia, I can make a request to the same endpoint, but if I set the HTTP request type to be delete, put patch, that method will not be allowed. But if I change to a post request, it happens successfully. Before we continue, let's update the GraphQL request. We'll add null for the root value. We missed that previously. If we load localhost slash API slash GraphQL, you'll see that we have an application error. We need to fix this. From the request, let's destructure the query string and we'll rename query to QS. Then where we are fetching the query variables and operation name, we need to either fetch this from the body or the query string if there is any. So if the request is a get request, then we'll assume those values are provided in the query string. Otherwise they're in the body request. Now if we load our endpoint and we add query string query and our GraphQL query, you'll see the response is successful. Now let's update the application to return an error if someone tries to fetch the root GraphQL endpoint. We'll first check if there is no query in the query string, and if the request is a get request, we'll simply return an error to the user. Now if we load the browser and we remove the query string query, you'll see that we'll get a error 400. 